they were uh, they were they were talking about yesterday. Uh, Nick Nick Petit Frere taking over the the spot at right tackle. Um, what have you seen from him over the last uh, couple of years in his development and, and him kind of solidifying that spot on the offensive line for you guys? Well, Nick Petit has been like tremendous like this year. Like last year, like he was he was getting like a couple like reps and stuff, of course, especially like during Northwestern game for me. And that Northwestern game for me, it showed me and all the other offensive linemen like, all right, he will be ready to play. Like he's not no slacker. Like he he wants to work. Like that's what Black Nation is going to see out of Nick T. He's going like he's going he's going to work and he's going to protect Justin like as well as anybody too. Because he's one. Of, I I got a feeling that after he gets done here. He will be one of the best tackles, like in his class. We don't get to see you guys up close anymore, obviously. Um, but they said he's three hundred fifteen pounds now. Does he look bigger in person now? Uh, he looks a lot bigger, <laughs> a lot bigger than uh, like two ninety five. Like this year, he has been, he been really focused on like bringing his weight up and also like making sure he does the right technique that Coach Dell wants us to do as well. Like. With him adding that weight on, makes him a lot more stronger in the run game, a lot more powerful in the pass game as well. Thanks. All right, we'll go next to Stephen Means from Cleveland.com with Patrick Murphy on deck. Stephen. I know you've had some injury problems in the past, but just having, I know you would probably rather have started the season normally when it was supposed to start, but given that you had a little bit of extra time this off season to maybe you know, recover from whatever you may have been struggling last season. How has that helped you coming into this season? How much better do you just feel? It helped me out a lot, but at the same time, I was ready in like August. You know, I was like everybody was ready too. Like, like yeah, my my injuries was like kind of nagging me like throughout the whole season last year. But of course, like everybody saw it last year. Like towards the end of the season, I slowly got better, but it wasn't there that. I wanted to, that I wanted myself to be at, or my teammates wanted wanted myself because because last year everybody knew that I wasn't the best last year at all because coming from you know my injury and trying to be and just trying try try to come back for the season just to help out my teammates you know that was like one of the big things for me is to help out my teammates more than anything you know and with my injuries just. You know, injuries, injuries, but you got to fight through it. All righty, we'll go next to Patrick Murphy from 247 Sports with Tony Gerdeman on deck. Patrick. There, you mentioned not thinking you played at your best last year. How much of that is motivating you to play at that best this year? Uh, it's like no words at all. Like, like after watching my last year's film with all the games and stuff, like, I knew I wasn't like 100%. I knew I wasn't powerful in my run game. I knew I wasn't like as fluent I am right now in my past. My past says like that mode me that motivate me so much that I just want to like go out there and compete and dominate like whoever's in, whoever's in front of me right now. Like yeah, I'm gonna have fun doing it. We are all gonna have fun doing it, but also at the same time, it's like it's it's business for me. And We've heard about you as a leader. Can you give an example or two about how you've become a, a bigger leader this off season and going into the regular season? Well, technically, like this year, I have been like a leader, but I know for sure, like last year, I was a leader as like coming out from my injuries from like the past season and actually fighting through my fighting through it and like fighting through adversity because. You know, everybody goes to adversity, but I feel like I had one of the biggest adversities that on the team, you know, because dealing with a major in injury throughout the season, it just, it just pushed me a lot more to actually show like the younger, younger classmen, like, yeah, you, yeah, you're going to be hurt, but also at the same time, you're going to be, you got to push through it because you got to do it for your teammates. Thanks there. All right, the next up is Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Tony. Hey, Thayer, I'm not sure you've gone against Baron Browning much. I know there's talk of him like um, rushing the passer on, on passing downs. Did, have you gone against him much in practice? And 
what's he kind of look like if you have? I have Wing is bearing a lot. He's like I say, he's gonna be a disruption to like other offensive tackles because he gets off the ball really very quick and shoot, he's powerful as well. Like don't ever like don't sleep on his like don't sleep on him at all because he's gonna be a problem on the outside. That's all Thank I got. you. All right, next up, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Austin Ward on deck. Bill. Hi, Fair. Uh, just how affected were you last year? Like, what percentage do you think you played at? And how, how good do you think you can be this year? Oh, well, to be honest, I felt like I was about, like, like 80, 80 to 70 percent, you know. But that really didn't matter because it was more for the team than anything. But yeah, I could I could have started last year, like and had somebody else go in, but that wouldn't be right for me to actually be a leader for like everybody else. You know, because if I set out what's that show for the other players like I mentioned before, like younger players under me, like if I have an injury, I might as well just sit out, you know. Like that that doesn't make sense to me. Like I wanna make sure that everybody sees me like like yeah, this this guy's tough, like he, he will do anything for his teammates. And then this year, what do you think you're going to show? This year is going, I'm going to be showing a lot more. Like for us, like in the run game, like I'm going to be a lot more powerful. I'm going to be finishing and sustain my blocks a lot more too. Cause last year I wasn't sustaining my blocks cause I was too, too cautious about my injuries. I was very too cautious, but this year I'm going to be sustaining my blocks. Thanks there. Alrighty, next up is Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Nathan Baird on deck. Austin. Hey, there. Beyond beyond the actual injuries slowing you down, one thing that uh, Coach Stud talked about um, yesterday was that you couldn't train the same. You couldn't do as much heavy lifting. So this off season and this preparation, you know, for what you want to show starting on Saturday, you know, how different is that than what you had to deal with in 2019 and and how much you know? How many gains? How much gains do you think you've made uh, in terms of strength just to be ready for this season compared to last year? Oh, you know, yes. Like I had an injury that prevented me to not actually like lift as hard, and had an injury that made me like stop at certain like certain drills because I couldn't actually like you know do it fully until the best of my abilities. So with this this year, I can. Like I can lift a lot more. I feel a lot stronger. I feel a lot more quicker than I did last year. Like I, I do feel like everybody is ready to see like what's, like what Buckeye Nation, like Buck, like Ohio State Buckeyes is about. So I, I, I just can't wait. I'm, I'm just so anxious. I'm just so anxious to actually play. It, it, it just feels like you've got like you feel like you have something to prove that people forgot what you could be when you were healthy. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like, yes, like, it's not going to be perfect all the, all the time, but you're going to see a different there. So you're going to see a different offensive lineman too. Like why Davis, Josh Myers, you're going to see I mean, everybody else that start on the offensive line or behind us too. Like that we are like a force to be reckoned with right now. All righty, next up is Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com, and then we'll go to Brendan Gulick. Nathan. Hey, Thayer. Uh, offensive linemen talk all the time about how important it is to have sort of a cohesive unit to really kind of gel together. Uh, obviously, the you didn't have the spring and summer that you usually would have to be able to do that. So what did you and the other offensive linemen try to do to address that and have kind of that cohesiveness coming into the season? Well, for us, like everybody else, we – met like every day during the quarantine, you know, like, yeah, like we couldn't be there with each other, but just seeing each other on Zoom calls, like talking about protections and talking about how in the run game, like, and just talking in general about how life is going during, throughout the quarantine, like they met, that made us a lot more closer than I think than anybody else in the whole country, because we love each other, like, we we'll do anything for each other. We, like we'll go to battle for each other. Like that's one thing I do think that we have more of this year. 
I will go to bow for anybody. All righty, next up we'll go to uh, uh, Brendan Gulick with Buckeyes Now on Sports Illustrated with Andy Anders on deck. Brendan. Hey, Fair. Coach Stud told us yesterday that uh, in the offseason, he was able to pull some GM reports from the NFL uh, on a number of you guys uh, up front to kind of figure out what their perspective was of your strengths and of your weaknesses, trying to enhance the strengths, trying to address the weaknesses. Are you willing to share with us maybe a little bit uh, about what was on those reports about you? Well, basically, it's just me sustaining my boxing, having the leg drive that I had my sophomore year, but 10 times more. You know, last year, everybody knew I couldn't actually, like, pull out, sustain a whole drive without something hurting, of course. But that's one of the uh, things that that kind of made me, like, go for it a lot more because me being an offensive lineman or anybody being an offensive lineman who doesn't sustain blocks, it's like, all right, why are you on the offensive line then? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to be on the offensive line, you got to sustain your blocks and hold your blocks as, as long as you can so that ball carrier or quarterback can get off the ball, like, can throw the ball off and make big runs. How about Nebraska defensively? They lost three starters on the defensive line and um, they, they have some experience coming back, but not guys that have been consistent rotational players. Just curious on, as you guys have tried to game plan for this week, what challenges does that defensive line present for you? The challenge is, is for us is really not knowing who is actually about to start. You know, like that's, that's one of the biggest challenge, challenges that we have because usually like we have like two or three games on like our Big Ten opponents before we actually go against them, so so we can actually know like what we have. Like, like yeah, this year it sucks sucks because of COVID, but at the same time we kind of get got feeling of what they might be running. But the only difference is like who who's the personnel for the defense. That's the only difference uh, this year from all other years past. Thank you. All right, next up, Andy Anders from Press Pros and Dan Hope on deck. Andy. Uh, yeah, I um, obviously getting Wyatt Davis back was huge for you guys. I'm curious, uh, how did you find out that he was opting back in and what was your immediate reaction when that happened? Well, with that, it was just like, I kind of felt for him, like he even said it. Like, it was like no communication from the Big Ten at all. Like, I kind of understand where he was coming from. Like he was like the top guard in the whole country, just get drafted, you know? And he was like, we basically talked about it. We was like, man, like there's no communication with the Big Ten. So we might, like, I don't know what he, he didn't know what he was about to do for real until like the dis decision that was actually made. And I respect him for it, but I respect him a lot more, even, even more than I do now. You know, just to come back, just to win a national title and just be back with his brothers for, like, for the one the last time. Right. But I'm, uh, I'm also curious, how did he like, did he tell you, did you hear from someone else? What um, what transpired when you found out he was coming back? He told, he basically told like everybody, like, I'm coming back. Like, there's really nothing. It's just, he just basically just told us like straight up, like, all right, I'm coming back because if we have a season, I'm coming back. If we don't, I'm going to be doing something else. Right. Um, and then as a, as a group, have you discussed, like, what the potential for this offensive line is just as a unit? I mean, obviously, you have a lot of talent, a lot of, you know, Josh is going to be a Remington candidate at center. Um, what, what do you feel, what does the room feel as the ceiling? To be honest, like, last year, everybody said, like, we was – like one of the best offensive line groups that obviously has ever had, but I, I personally think what I, what I have seen and what we have been doing during practice all this time, like I, I do think again that we are going to be the best offensive lineman, offensive line, in the whole country. Thank you. Yeah. Ready. Next, we'll go to Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors. Dan. Hey, Fair. I mean, you talked about the injuries from last season. Is there things that you've done 
in terms of preparing your body this season to try to prevent those injuries this year? Well, I have been preparing myself ever since, like, beginning of the season. Like, beginning of, like, last season. Not this season, of course, but last season. Like, I started eating well and doing, like, my core work. Like, my core was, like, the biggest thing for me because I had a weak core throughout that whole time. But I made sure that my core was strong. And I made sure my feet was moving. And I made sure that everything else was strong as well. So I actually sustained blocks. Thanks, Bear. All righty, next up, we will go to um, Tim May from Letter Monroe and the Tim May Podcast. Tim. Tim's trying. There we, there we go. I couldn't get my screen to come up. Uh, sorry about that, Mike. Hey, uh, Thayer, uh, as you get ready to start this season, you've talked about the confidence you have up front with your group. And I, I imagine you were finding that kind of funny people calling that the best offensive line in the country last year. When, it, uh, it, you know, it, one of the best offensive lines in the country, and you didn't feel like you were 100%. But anyway, past that, your quarterback, Justin Fields, is back. What, what level of confidence does that even ri uh, raise for you guys up front uh, having him uh, basically expected to be one of the best, if maybe not the best uh, quarterback in the country. It makes a huge difference, you know, because he, he knows the offense on the back of his hand. You know, he knows, like, how long to hold the ball and how long not to hold the ball, of course. Like, with having a quarterback that knows everything from front, front of the hand to the back of his hand, it makes a huge difference for us because, yeah, like, we, we want the ball to get out quicker, but also at the same time, we, we like him have to be we, – we like him to actually know what he's doing as well. And what do you, what's the sense you think that uh, Trey Sermon and Master Teague the third now bring to that running back room now that J.K. Dobbins is gone? What what do you expect to be different about the running game, or do you expect anything to be different? I don't expect anything to be different, nothing at all. You know, like J.K. was a great running back. And I do firmly believe that Master Teague – and Trey Sermon will be as good as J.K. They, they was for us last year and years before that. Thanks, man. All righty, next up we'll go to Mark Snyder from Press Pros. Mark. Mark, Mark is muted. Mark, you're on mute. Um, yeah, uh, Thayer, uh, what makes you confident in the running backs? Because one is they're both coming off injuries and uh, one is new to the program and the other one played in the third and fourth quarter last year. Repeat that question again. Yeah, well, what, may, what gives you confidence in the running backs? Because they were both injured last year and one's new to the team and another one played uh, late in games last year when the score was out of hand. A lot of times. The, the different, well, to be honest, they run very, very hard. Like, like Trey, he'll run hard, and plus he's he's very fast as well. Like, like having Trey and Justin and Master behind behind us as offensive lines. Like, all right, we run if we run the ball, we're gonna get a first down. If we don't run the ball. Justin can actually like pass the ball to our wide receivers and they can make plays. And if nobody's open, Justin can actually run the ball and just take off because that's that's how talented we are right now on the offense. And for us the running backs, like I don't think Buckeye Nation has nothing to worry about at all. It's gonna be the same same mindset that we have that we had like all all the years as Buckeyes. And our, our final questioner for Thayer will be Spencer Holbrook from Letter Monroe. Spencer. Uh, Thayer, what's it like to line up beside Harry Miller every play? Uh, line up against Harry is, is very nice. Like, he, yes, he's a smart, he's a very smart guy, very smart guy. And he's also funny, but when he locks in, he locks in. Like, he's going to make sure that he does his job right and he makes sure that nobody else gets hurt. Like if he gets hurt, oh well, he he be fine. He'll keep get up and keep going, you know. So I, 
Harry Miller is going to be something special again. All right, Thayer, thank you very much for your time today.